G'day, how are you doing? Hopefully doing very well, keeping healthy and safe. I'm doing pretty good on this side of the camera. Today we're gonna have a look at this Intel Nook Wall Street. This is a small form factor computer and I've had Nooks on this channel before. I review them, I really do love them. Now this has been upgraded to the 12th gen Intel Core and we'll definitely see the performance difference. We're gonna have a look at that and we'll also look at the temperatures and fan noise of this computer. We'll have a look at this peek at the internals as well. Now as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to a different section that you may be interested to save you time. Let's have a quick look at the ports. So starting at the front, we've got the power button, We've got the audio combo jack. We've got two USB Type A ports. That's USB 3.2 Gen 2. So that's the fast one. Now looking on the left hand side of this, we've got a uh, Kensington lock slot here. And looking on around the back, we'll start on the right hand side. We've got two HDMI ports, that full size HDMI ports. That's version 2.0B. And then above that, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports. That's USB Type C. And then on the left of this is two USB type A ports. Now the top one is USB 3.2 Gen 2, so that's a fast one. And then the one below, that is version two, so that's a slow USB. And then we've got, unusually, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port RJ45, so that's actually faster than what you normally see. That's good to see there. And then that's where you plug in the AC power. And then that's the antenna and then nothing on the right hand side. Let's have a look at the internals of the Nook 12. Now first off we just need to turn on its back so this is the bottom side of it and you'll see that actually there's four feet and they are rubbered with screws so you can try to unscrew these with your fingers. Now if they're too tight just need to fill it head just to give it a little bit of a nudge just a quick snap, and then after you should do it for your fingers. And then all you need to do is just lift this up and you'll be able to do this pretty easy. Now we can first straight off see the two sodium slots for the memory or the RAM. It can go up to 64 gigs. And then right next to that is the M.2 SATA. Now this is a B key, so it can support a 2242 M.2 SATA. So beware of that, it's not a NVMe. Right next to that is the primary one. This is the M.2 NVMe drive. And again, you can see this one here, uh, 2280 format it does support and on the other side of this is where the processor lives and pretty much you just gotta undo everything and then take off these screws in uh, around there just to flip it around but what I just want to quickly also show you on the other end is you can see there I've got thermal tape here uh, for both the two storage if need to. It's nice to see that Intel at least put thermal tape so you can actually see this is also copper that should give it some just to spread the heat for the storage. Here's the result of the performance benchmarks for the Wall Street. This one's configured with an i7-1260P processor with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. And here's the results for Passmark, Citibench R23, PCMark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Fugan Photoshop, Fugan Lightroom, Fugan Premiere Pro, Blender, Furmark, Eugene Engine, Inspect View Pref. And some gaming benchmarks like Far Cry 6, Cyberpunk 2077, and F1 2022. Now looking at the temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurement, my ambient temperature in the room was 25 degrees Celsius. And my ambient room noise was 35 decibels. And at this temperature, my hand was at 34 to 35 degrees Celsius. So I took my base measurement when the computer was idle and the hottest area on the top of the computer was 30 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it measured in at 35 decibels so practically quiet and the average internal core temperature was 35 degrees celsius 
Then I, I put 20% load on the computer, so that's average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, surfing web, streaming video, and the hottest area on top of the computer was 33 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it hit a maximum of 37 decibels, and the average internal core temperature was 44 degrees Celsius. This is the Intel Nook, 11, Nook Wall Street, 100% load, 100% load, 100% load we're looking at, 100% so we're actually looking quite inside the fins, it's actually quite hot inside the fin, but actually not too bad at the top here. So we move towards the top, we're not too bad here at all. Definitely something, and I'm just going to pick this thing up and just see how this goes off right here so let's have a look on the back top one play so definitely want to see how this goes how hot does this get 50 degrees down the bottom here is what we're looking at 50 degrees let's have a look at the stability performance of the processor in the knock wall street this particular one's configured with an i7 1260p processor looking at intel website reports this processor has a maximum total boost for the performance cores 4.7 gigahertz and the efficiency cores at 3.4 gigahertz for the maximum total boost and also windows reports that this process has a base clock speed of 2.1 gigahertz so we actually want to see this faster than 2.1 or above now i've got this computer currently running on 100 percent load for the processor memory and storage for close to nearly three hours and i can see that the speed of the processor is ranging anywhere between 3.1 to about 3.5 gigahertz so i'm just going to average it around about 3.3 gigahertz which is way above the base clock speed of 2.1 so we definitely don't have thermal throttling we do have a bit of turbo throttling but that's not too bad it's actually getting very close to the maximum for the efficiency cores and we also have the internal core temperatures sitting around about 83 to 84 degrees celsius so we've still got a bit of headroom for temperatures for internal core temperatures so it is still doing very good and it is keeping nice and safe still so definitely i think the cooling solution for this knock wall street is definitely adequate and is doing a very good job holding this high speeds definitely love seeing the massive increase in this intel nook wall street compared to the previous gen it's definitely still nice seeing it holds this nice really small form factor absolutely great as a media center or even a desktop computer or even as part of an av solution you need to hang or hide it behind a tv or a whole bunch of screens and it still is a mountable as well too absolutely great community it's gone quieter and definitely it is a nice solution for those who are looking for a small form factor the desktop computer and i hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it if you did even support my channel smash that like button for me if you haven't already subscribed to my channel but hit the subscribe button screen and do travel on your video every week and as always imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting and i'll see you next video